Hey everyone, Rivers here with some cool tech, and look what I have here today. It's the Minix Neo X5 Mini. This little player is a condensed down version of the awesome Neo X5, one of my all time favorite Android mini PCs. So you can see it's lost a few inches around the waist, but it's kept most of the goodness that made the X5 so popular. It also comes with an improved IR remote control. What you get in the box is a manual, the X5 Mini, the remote control, a USB cable, power adapter cable, and an actual HDMI cable, which you don't see too often these days. Inside, it's got a Rockchip 3066 CPU, 1 gig of DDR3 DRAM, 8 gigs of flash memory, Wi-Fi 802.11 BG and in, but really, it's the ports and the software that make this an exceptional player. So over here on the side, you've got two full-size USB ports. You've also got a full-size SD card slot. And then on the back, you've got your HDMI port, optical audio out, which does 5.1 channel sound, your Ethernet port, and your power port. Now on the bottom, it's got new grippier material plus rubber feet to keep it in place. The included remote is a nice improvement too. All the buttons are working great, including power, home, and menu buttons, plus it seems to have a better field of view. Here you can see it compared to the original X5, which I think is a great improvement. It's just the perfect size now, and it has just the perfect number of ports. You do lose your audio jacks, power button, and one USB port, but I think it's worth it to have this nice small form factor. Here you can see what it looks like compared to an Apple TV. They're very similar in size and shape. They have almost the same ports on the back as well. The difference is on the side, there are the extra two USB ports and SD card slot. Plus, of course, the ability to install thousands of Android apps. And if you need to upgrade the firmware in the future, the flash mode button is right here on the bottom. Overall, I think this new form factor is perfect. It has just the right number of ports and it feels solid now. It's about as heavy as an Apple TV. Here's what you'll see when you first start up the X5 Mini. You'll have your choice of launchers. You can choose the grid launcher, which uses the included mouse, or if you have a regular mouse or an air mouse remote control, you can use the other launcher. So the grid launcher is very easy to use. You just toggle where you want to go, and it works great for apps that are meant for remote, like XBMC, where you can just go up, down, left, right, and select to do almost everything. By the way, I'll put a link to this version of XBMC in the description down below. This is a different version of XBMC that uses MX Player to play the video, and it seems to work really well. The X5 Mini has great software. Everything just works. It really strikes me as the kind of player that would be sold in a retail store. It comes with everything you need to get started quickly, and it's something an average user would feel pretty comfortable using. Here you can see photo slideshows work great with the included remote. For other apps that require typing or the use of a mouse, I recommend an air mouse remote like this one. It uses an accelerometer to give you a mouse cursor wherever you want it. You can use its pointer on the on-screen keyboard or type in your searches as well. I'll put a link to some good remotes in the video description. If you choose the other launcher, this is what you'll see. So you've got a lot of your most commonly used apps and settings on the desktop. And here's the rest of the included apps, so you've got most of the basics. The camera on here actually works really well, and it works in Skype also. You've got a Chrome, you've got a DNLA streaming app, so you can send YouTube videos to your big screen TV. Your photo gallery, email, maps, Google Play, button configuring software, uh, video player, and a bunch of other apps that you might find useful. Plus, Google Play will let you install pretty much anything that you want. Next, I went ahead and installed all my favorite apps on here, as well as Go Launcher HD, which upgrades the way the icons look, makes them a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and take a look at the settings. First up, we have Wi-Fi, which works great on the X5 Mini. It connected right up for me, no problems at all. You've got Ethernet if you want to enable it. Here in the sound is an interesting thing. So you've got 5.1 channel sound through the optical audio out, which is awesome. Also under display, you have the option to have your monitor turn off and you can select the amount of time that you want it to wait before it turns off. So this is really useful and I wish more players had it. Now let's look at storage. Over here, Minix does it right. They give you four full gigs for app storage. The rest is for data storage. And then of course, I've got a 32 gig SD card in here. And finally, for the Android version, we've got 4.11 Jelly Bean, which works great. So I've got no complaints at all. All right, now we're going to run a couple benchmarks on here. So first up, Linpack, which is a quick CPU benchmark. And it's getting in the upper 70s, 80s, which is awesome for a Rockchip 3066 CPU. So that would explain why it's so nice and fast. OK, next we'll run CPU-Z, which is a real-time CPU info app and device info app. And you can see here it's running a dual core, uh, the variable clock speed. 
And depending how much you stress the CPU, it'll up the clock speed for you, so you can see that it does go up pretty high. Uh, I have seen it go all the way up to 1.6 gigahertz. And here you can see some more information about the system itself. And finally, I ran Antutu, which is a benchmarking app that benchmarks overall system performance, and we got 10,307, which is a really good score for this CPU. So I'm very happy with that, and that explains why it's so nice and snappy. Web surfing on the X5 Mini works great, too. It's nice and fast using Dolphin Browser. I can see using this on my big screen TV from my couch. Let me quickly show you the video playback on here using MX Player, which is an awesome player for Android. So the video on here is very good. It's easy to control. You move the slider and it quickly moves to where you want to go and it's no problem playing 1080p MKV files. I can tell Minix has learned a lot from the previous Android Mini PCs because the X5 Mini is really smooth and apps run really well on it. I'll miss that other 8 gigs of flash memory, but having a 4 gig partition for apps plus using my 32 gig micro SD card and the fact that I really like the compact form factor make it worth it to me. It's a little bit hard to find right now, but I'll put a link to the X5 Mini in the video description below. I'll list any new info about the software in the video description. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. Thanks for watching, and aloha.